Hello beautiful Pisces and welcome back to Intuitive Energies. My name is Jane and um, yeah, I had something interesting happen. Um, instead of pressing the on button for some reason, I recorded myself doing chores and then did not record the entire reading. But I have all the cards here and uh, I do remember most of it. <laughs> I'm hoping that the spirit helps me out here. There must be a reason why I wasn't meant to do that reading. I'm looking and it's recording now. So I'm looking at it and it is recording. So we're looking at the ground and the crown. And what came out for the ground was the future and hermit. And what came out for the crown was the warrior. And along with it came the Five of Pentacles and the Princess of Swords. So, let's take a look at this. Now, you're going to be happy to know, for some of you who don't like the shuffling, I won't be shuffling. I have all the cards. But I will be going through it once again, trying to remember what order they came out. Um, yeah, that might be interesting. We'll just begin. We'll begin, my beautiful Pisces. So, these are general readings for Pisces. Please remember, take what resonates, leave the rest. And these are general, not one-on-one. -on -one. So, um... Absolutely. I like to explore the energies of the week. And this week I felt like we're coming out of the dark. We're coming out of wherever little hideaway we've been into, protecting our energies and ourselves. And it's been a little bit of, um, what do you call that? Um, we needed to adapt a little bit out of that because it's quite, it feels quite harsh. Uh, it feels like stinging rain which is raining outside. We're getting a lot of rain now. Um, but you're coming out with gifts, Pisces. I can see this from this image, which is the future. You're coming out with gifts from the future. I think I've read this card before, and they're talking about this angel giving a glimpse at something, right? Letting you glimpse into something further. This hermit, this foundational hermit part that you were doing has helped you glimpse a little bit into the future. Maybe to see things the way you hadn't been able to. Maybe to get a different perception on things. Maybe to be more of an open vessel who has offerings to give, right? Um, this is coming in very clearly as your foundation. Um, on the flip side with your crown, you have the warrior coming out. You have the divine masculine coming out to um, really just cut through this stuff here. The Page of Swords is what sounds like truth, but isn't. And the Five of Pentacles for me is about isolation and loneliness, okay? So um, for me, the Page of Swords has always been the gossip. But the gossip, you can... Uh, we've all been in that thing where we've heard things and they sound like the truth, right? So then we run with it. And whether we realize it or not, we're spreading falsehoods. There may be a nugget of truth in some of the things they say, but it doesn't mean it's all truth. Um, I feel this represents a lot of the world that we live in now. Um, moments of, of, of truth, you know, on, on medias and stuff and such. I'm not going to get into that, but that's, that's like that. People's perceived truths get um, announced like the whole truth. And I think this is to cut that, not to cut it down, but like I said, for so much so to offer a different option, a different perspective. And I think that's what you are coming into. Okay, so um, the first card that came through Pisces with this was the star. Okay, in the star you feel this beautiful energy of um, knowing your goal, knowing your your true north, like the North Star, right? You look at it and you focus on it to get guidance to know where you're going. So I feel that there's a determination within you to know, to feel what's coming in. Okay, what am I doing here? I think the, these cards were, ooh, this is, this was upside down. So the Eight of Swords as well came out with this. And I'm, I'm seeing it as an unblocking, okay? Um, 
I seeing things in a different perception right here. I'm blocking, I'm putting it right here because that's where I feel it belongs. It's an unblocking from this stuff here. I love this warrior card, by the way. I love you embracing your divine masculine. Going, we're gonna act on this. We're gonna we're gonna try and help fix this. And it's um, in this card, he's very aggressive, but it doesn't mean that he is. It's the warrior, and it says, I ask for what I want because I deserve to get what I want. And that's like not settling for garbage, right? Um, it is focusing on what you really want. And once you kind of put it in your mind and really focus on this true north coming in, you're gonna you're gonna get it. It's gonna it's gonna make a lot of sense. Okay, so the next card that came out was another one from the Tarot Within. What is it called? Um, the Spirit Within Tarot. Love it, love it. And it's the King of Swords. And he came out at the beginning of the week. This will give you a perspective of um, higher, a higher ground perspective. Like, a, I wouldn't say more logical, but let's talk more open. Bright open spaces, right? When you're looking from above, when you're looking from a mountaintop, you can see how everything kind of works together. The colors, the mountains, the streams. When you're just at the stream, you see how the stream is working. When you're in a mountain, you just see the mountain. So this is seeing things for what it is, okay? Um, some of these things, um, like I was saying, um, these perceptions that we see from day to day, or we've been hit with, some of these um, perceptions come from people being uh, in that same just little bubble, right? So we're here to offer up more. I love this because it's always about the offering right here. Okay? The future. We want to do things different in the future. We want to do better. We always want to improve on ourselves. And this is kind of the way this is going to um, start showing up in this way. Okay. So let's see here. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to take, I'm surprised there's only one, there should be more, there should be more, there's a card missing, well I say there's a card missing, okay, I found it, okay, so I pulled from the Ancestor deck after, and what came out was the Three of Swords and the Seven of Swords, first the Seven of Swords. This is the conflict and the, the uh, again, there's a deception in this card, okay, um, going on. Um, it's about mental tests. It's about negativity in the world. It's about um, safeguarding yourself from that kind of energy. But at this point, I feel that there needs to be... A, there's action that needs to be taken. And it's coming in with the Three of Swords. All this sorrow, all of this feeling that you feel. How? Why do I feel this way? Why do people feel this way? It needs to be explored so that we can dive in deeper and figure out solutions. No more running away. No more ducking. It's time to face the truth. With the Three of Swords, it's very much facing the truth. And... Um, the reason I say the Three of Swords for me is seeing the truth in the situation to move on from it is because sorrow, um, especially if it comes to relationship problems and the end of a relationship, pardon me, the end of a relationship or a massive heartache, okay, a betrayal, a rejection, right at that moment, Pisces, you have to admit to yourself that you know that something really true has been revealed to you. You feel it all the way down to your toes. When pain radiates through you, there's a lot of truth that comes in with it. Okay? Because you're surrendering to something very painful. And at that point, there's usually a lot that happens. It incites you to get yourself out of there. It incites you to move. It incites you to do something. 
okay? So I feel this is always a call to action. It's something, it's very closely related. I would even call this a little tower, you know, compared to the tower card. It's very close to it. It's like, ouch, that hurt and I don't want it to hurt. So it could be in relationship, but it could be in your life. Things that are not feeling right. Things that are making it so uncomfortable that you have to face the truth and move on. Okay? Um, I feel that the world is going through that as well. They're getting very uncomfortable in their own skin. They're very uncomfortable with their environment. Okay? Um, the one thing, though, I think that needs to be more emphasized is working together to get it right. Okay? So, I pulled from, let's see, the soul's journey next. Um, the soul's journey lesson cards. Ooh, lesson. All right, so I have, the first one is trust. I accept that my inner voice will always guide me correctly. I like this, especially with the hermit card. And we'll put it with it. It's got similar colors on it. A lot of the blues, some purples. There's a lot of insight, a lot of communicating within yourself to know, to be really truthful with yourself, even if that truth is, isn't always a happy one. Do I get but hurt as myself? I'm using myself as, a, as an example over certain things sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Is it because I'm oversensitive? Could be, yeah. I'm a very sensitive human being. You can hurt me easily if you try. Um, are there reasons why? Um, yeah, probably because I've been hurt before. A lot. Um, it's it, it felt when I was young and very sensitive that people go out of their way to be mean. Um, are there lessons there? Absolutely. Are they being purposely hurtful. Sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes hurt comes from within them, okay? Sometimes they're reacting to me, and sometimes they're just being hurtful. But those are the things that you need to unpack. And you need to trust your feelings, you need to trust your judgment, you need to be very clear communicating with yourself. No more lies, okay? The swords of coming in as truth to see the bigger picture. We're all still looking at that very, very intently looking at that and that comes from an internal place and from it you will come out as the warrior and you're gonna see that you deserve you deserve happiness even if you've stumbled even if you've done not the right thing sometimes it doesn't mean that you're undeserving it just means that you're human okay so what came out to is relationships and adversity with these cards and the relationship card speaks of I am Attracted to those people who serve my higher good. As well, you need to remember that you can't keep hanging around with people who make you feel bad. <laughs> if you do, then you have to question that as well. You need to question that behavior, right? You have to start looking for people who challenge you. People who um, also make you feel good. It's not just about having people who are challenging you at every turn. You do want a balance of people who will challenge you and also a balance of people who will um, who will support you, who will help you on your way, who may, you know, help you think, um, help you expand your thinking, but in kindness, okay? Um, It won't judge you. It won't judge you. Then you have the card of adversity here. I accept that challenges are the best way to learn. So that's the flip side of it. That's telling you that don't hate too much on one and love too much on the other because they both have something to teach you. Okay, Those energies that come at you when you're going, Ooh, that doesn't feel good. This has a lot to teach you. It has a lot to show you. Okay, And just snapping to I don't like you is is a cop-out okay why don't you like that person what are what what is it about them that you don't like is it the way they treat people is it their personalities are they just too brash for you are they too not sensitive enough is there something you can look at okay and I don't want you to spend 
um, you know, months trying to figure out one person. But I don't want you to just simply dismiss everything, um, thinking they're wrong and I'm right. I want you to look at things really deeply. And if they are wrong, you can just say, I don't agree with that person and I'm not attracted to those type of people and I've really unpacked it and it's just not for me. I've realized that I don't want to attract this kind of individual in my life. It's just not for me, right? Not your cup of tea. Not everybody will and you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea and that's, that's just the way it is. But let them come in and show you something that you can use. Um, the thing that I talked about a lot more in the first reading was about um, taking the things you don't like, writing them down, and then doing the exact opposite. Switching it into something you will like. Okay? Um, uh, let's say I was I was talking about the trip we took uh, eight hours away. I don't like long trips, but I do like short trips. Up to four-hour trips with a lot of stops in between. So you see what I did there? I took what I didn't like and then switched it into something I do like. So I'm reprogramming my head to go, I like smaller trips. I like more stops. I like more looking at things and plenty of time to do it. There you go. I want you to do the same with a lot of things in your life. Um, another one would be, I don't like people telling me how to think, but I do like people who give me different options, different ways to think, and then let me ponder on it. Love that. Okay? So this is who you're attracting. This is what I want you to do with this energy going back out. Okay. So, I took soul cards, and I remember saying this in the first readings, like, I know you guys don't like soul cards. Some of you don't like. Although, I haven't heard a lot recently from any of you from those. So, it's it's good. It's good. I'm happy. Because um, <clears throat> I just think they're freaky. But they're pretty cool. And this one, um, I felt, is like this. Um, these spoke to me of the beautiful flower or the inner light inside. And while we're busy running around, or it should go this way, while we're running around, oof, 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 trying to catch our tails, we're missing the beauty of the flower and the light. How gorgeous it is, how beckoning it is to us. And also, in regards to this reading, we're missing the meat of the whole thing. By going, no, I don't want to, and I want to retreat, instead of engaging in a way of of the ebb and flow of it, um, we're just gonna keep missing the point, missing the flower, missing the beauty. Okay, this this card spoke really truly of this, and it's there for you to see. It's not like it's hidden. It is blaringly apparent from the card that the flower is there. Stop and smell the flowers. This is this would be for me. Stop and smell the flowers because you're not. Okay? Um, this may be the world. It doesn't mean that it's you. It could be representative of what the world is doing right now, which makes a lot of sense too. Um, there's a lot of scrolling. We don't, we don't look at things. We just scroll through things, right? I've done it too. I've done it too. But I'm always so attracted to the ones that make me think, that make me love, that make me listen to messages from people of today, from people of the past. The next card, the, la the other soul card that came out was this one. And to me, it's both carrying a blessing and a burden, I feel. Because I feel that this is the color of fire, the orange. Um, I feel a lot of Nine of Wands here, a push and pull. Sometimes it feels good, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it feels easy, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you feel like you're bringing the light in and sometimes you're just carrying molten lava. It is definitely representative of being kind to yourself, knowing as well that with the insight, because the eyes are closed again, with the Hermit's help, you'll be able to transmute this energy and help it grow and help it be what it needs to be what it should be, my beautiful Pisces. 
All right, so we're halfway through this reading. I don't know if I have enough cards to get to the other half. But um, definitely, if you are liking these readings, I invite you to please uh, click that uh, subscribe button, notification bell, share it, comment, give me, your, um, give me your comments. I love your comments. I love hearing from you. I practice more in energies on um, just taking what's out there in the world, Pisces, and using it to our best advantage so that we can move forward in this um, light and energy. All right, so the the other cards, which ones came out after? I think it's these. Okay, so the next cards that came out were the uh, Sea Soul Journey Oracle cards. And what came out is faith and ease. And I love the way they say that. May trust steady your fears and ease make it effortless. Make it be effortless. And yes, these are exactly the cards that came out. So I remember pulling out this card and saying this. It's almost like a, a message. Almost like it is a message from Spirit saying to you, have faith, okay? Steady your fears. And know that ease will make it effortless for you, okay? Your ease of mind, your ease of being, your ease of knowing, it's going to help you get there. Hmm, there is definitely like a weight-like feeling here. You're working really hard. I almost feel like that's the blood flow of the leg pushing up. You're really trying hard to do things. But know that you don't have to try as hard as you think. You have done so much work on yourself that now it's becoming habit to look at things uh, from a different standpoint. Even if it takes you a couple of hours, even if it takes you a day, um, a day later for you to go, what's going on? Oh, wait, is this something else? You are now feeling it. You're seeing it. Okay? You're listening to your inner voice. You're seeing more than there is, that than you ever did before. Before you saw things very, very one way. Okay? Very one way. All right, so the next two cards were from the Creative Whack Pack. <laughs> and I love the fact that they're using whack in one of these cards. Um, it says, give yourself a whack on the side of the head. The more often you do something in the, na in the same way, the more difficult it is to think about doing it in any other way. Break out of this prison of familiarity by disrupting your habitual taught patterns. Write a love poem in the middle of the night, eat ice cream for breakfast, wear red socks, visit a junkyard, work the weekend, take the slow way home, sleep on the other side of the bed. Such jolts to your routines will lead to new ideas. How can you whack your thinking? So, if you're looking still at, where is it, the Eight of Swords that came out in reverse, this is you pushing out of the norm, pushing out of the way of thinking that you've always had. That's the whole point. Okay? The things that keep coming back in the world, they're just repeated stuff. Okay? You don't want to get stuck on that repeat mode. You don't want to be chasing your tail over and over again. You want to stop and see what's there. The beauty that surrounds you. The joy. That's one of the benefits of stopping and actually seeing. It's not just about dealing with what you're seeing it's to actually do different things and see the beauty and recapture the joy maybe of things that went unnoticed i like this one and look to the past history is loaded with creative analogies napoleon marching on moscow is really just project management oh my god mao waging a guerrilla war is like launching an ad campaign Pick a culture from the past. How would someone from that time deal with your issue? How about from your own personal history? What were you doing 10 years ago that might be useful to you now? What ideas from history can you apply to your current project? And in no way would I say wage war. <laughs> um, no. That would be a complete 
no, no, don't do that. But it is good to think outside of the box, and it is good to look in the past to see what kind of information was coming in. Oh, I just realized that I, I had peeled off one of my nails. So you see, oh, I'm all no, no, uh, no rings, and no nail polish. Wait a minute, Pisces. Wait. There you go. There you go. You're with me. I'm not shuffling. So it's the perfect time to do it. See? I'm thinking outside of the box. What did I do there? I fixed the problem. Why? Because I could. Ta-da! Look at that. Now it's wet. I'm in big trouble. Don't touch your nails. I said no rings. I need my rings. Let's do that. Let's continue on, though. All right. <laughs> Beautiful Pisces. Whatever comes your way, this is to tell you. You have the ability to fix it. It's not a tragedy. It's not a big deal. Nothing is. As long as you have your ability to be a free thinker and one to see things, you don't have a problem. You're doing absolutely great. There you go. See? Problem solved. Well, almost. There you go. All right, rectified, beautified, wonderful. All right, so we have inner strength and inspiration. We're going to start with inner strength. Sometimes all we really need is the courage to believe that we can do it, Pisces. That's the only thing we need. We're so afraid that we're not just not going to be able to do it. And I, real, I noticed something here. Okay, it, they both have the number five. Um, I'm going to take a look to the past and put it to inner strength. Look in the past how much you have gained strength, how much you have been able to overcome. Okay, just look at it that way. This is also from, this is a chakra reading card. So this is dealing with um, your solar plexus that vibrates beautiful yellow. You see yellow a lot here. Some yellow orange colors coming in, right? And um, this is your main power center. It represents your free will and where you draw energy for personal power, confidence, courage, and strength. Please make sure that they're up to snuff at this point. Okay, the last thing you need right now is to let anybody or anything make you feel small. You need to power forward and you need to do it with intense energy. Okay, even when this energy is hitting in your face and you go, oh, that's stinging rain, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Get an umbrella, get a jacket, you'll be fine. Okay, um, and your solar plexus is the part that also keeps... Um, it reflects the emotional body and your desire to attain a healthy self-esteem. This is where you need to you need to help with the balance here. Okay, I know in the past years we have really focused on the base chakra, but we're really focusing on our powerhouse. The orange, the yellow, it's all coming out as fire, energy, passion to follow through. So this is it's time to call your inner strength. And you have the ability to deal with anything in your life. You're all part of the universe. It has magnificent power, energy available to us at all times. So connect to it. Acknowledge and call upon the incredible strength that lies within you. So life can get challenging for you at present or maybe in the near future. And you're reminded that you have the tools and the ability to conquer anything that comes your way. Whether it's emotional, physical, mental, or spiritual challenge, know that you have the strength to move through it and come out the other end empowered. It's time to trust that you're strong enough and courageous enough to move through this difficult time and learn some powerful life lessons. Powerful, right? Get past through this three of swords. You know you can. Um, the universe is always giving you opportunities to build this inner strength. 
So it's up to you to take the challenge and rise yourself out of the ashes of, of whatever is going on. And look at things from a different point of view. That's, if anything, that's what I've been saying, okay? Don't get stuck in old ways of reacting to things or old system um, that weakens your inner strength. Make sure to listen to what um, your intuition, your, your inner wisdom is trying to communicate with you and put it into action. Here you go, with the warrior. Going right through your crown, okay? You have the courage of a lion. It's time to roar and, and embrace this part of you totally, okay? So the affirmation for this wonderful card is, I have the strength to face all of life's challenges with grace. Now, I'm going to go and look at the warrior here. I meant to do that a while ago, but since we have the strength card, and it's one, it's lovely, one. Where did I see that as well? I saw it in this one. Give yourself a whack on the side of the head, it's also a one. So, let's take a look at the beautiful warrior. Let's see what he has to say. Mm -hmm. How well do you stand for yourself? How well do you express needs? How much time, energy, and other resources do you allow others to demand of you? Problems you're experiencing may be the result of not asking either people around you or even your higher self to give you what you are entitled to have. So this is really coming out of your shell. I feel with this one, and this one is like, let me be strong. Let me go after what I want. Okay? And it says, you have a tendency to give too much of yourself and ask too little of others. If people come at you with bad energy, oh, okay, I understand it. Maybe you're not feeling well. Maybe I'll just retreat here. No, 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 no. They want you to go out and just really grab it. Grab it by the ears. <laughs> grab it that you know what. You must first identify what it is you really want for yourself and then ask for it clearly and directly, knowing that you deserve to get what you want and need. Communication, very important right here, okay? When you practice courage and standing up for yourself, you will finally see things come into harmony in many aspects of your life. You'll be in a better position to improve your current situation or allow your intuition to help you find a new one that will bring even more fulfillment. You have the right to defend yourself, and it's something you're born with, not something someone else grants you. And it's something that nobody can take away. I like that. I like this. Okay. I would talk about the art, but um, I think in a new year, or maybe not the new year, maybe soon, probably in December, I'm going to start doing deep dives in certain decks. So, if you're a member um, already, I'm going to be asking your opinion in which deck. This would be one of them, the Intuition Oracle. I love this one. Um, it's got beautiful art, and you can really stare at it, and we can work on it together. Um, I would like to start workshops with you guys. So, if you're willing to be part of it, that would be great. Um, we'll see. I'm working on it. I think it's great. I'd, I'd love to, to open you up, you know. Um, intuitively to just let yourself be free to express what you see and what you feel all right so sorry little uh, uh, in the middle but there you go inspiration 11 inspiration 11 be inspired to take action that is the other one and this one is definitely this is the sacral chakra. So I was talking sacral, solar, they're very like, let's do it. Let's do it. And it says, it's time to get inspired. Find your passion. Share it with the world. Inspiration is constantly flowing through and around you at all times. And it's inviting you to align with and connect to its powerful and creative energy. What inspires you and makes your soul shine? It's time to surround yourself with inspiring people. There you go. I'm surround attracted to those people who serve my higher good. Okay? Definitely coming in together here. Um, 
So it's to surround yourself with inspiring people, books, experiences, and anything that infuses you with inspiration. Have you been feeling bored or stale? And here we go. Oh, have you guys seen my little sheep? Say hello to Fred. All right. So it's a candle, by the way. There is the Four of Cups. Have you been feeling bored or stale? Uh huh. Yeah, maybe. Right. Um, what do you love to do that brings you creative inspiration? Which is funny because when I looked at this book, the first one that I landed was creativity. Okay, and we've been getting a lot of these creative cards. Um, whatever it is that fills you with energy is now time to bring it into your world. When you're driven by inspiration, it brings motivation, joy, and happiness into your being. This wave of energy will bring forth amazing positivity to your world, allowing you to feel content and with a sense of purpose in your life. When you're inspired and living in this vibration, those around you benefit as this state is being is truly infectious and you also start to inspire others. Inspiration is constantly flowing through me at all times and I am inspired. I love this. Love this. Okay? You can start doing inspiring things, um, building in inspirational groups, okay? Um, and all I have to say about that is if you do decide to do build groups anywhere um, that people can join, please try not to be too dictatorial. <laughs> Dict no dictators, okay? No Napoleons. We... We've had enough of those. Um, I know it's easy to do because some people like to take advantage, but those can be weeded out. You can get moderators and people and just kind of do it on the on the quiet side. I do it here on YouTube all the time. I get these trolls and just make them go. And I try to keep the community nice and happy. Okay? So you can do it. You don't need to always be in there and in everybody's face because if you are, you'll end up you'll end up alienating some people that don't need to be alienated, okay? They're just trying to find answers. So, just putting a little something something out there. Alright, so, the one card that I just realized that I did not pull from, haha, <laughs> that's probably why. And I lied, I am shuffling. Oh, I'm a liar. I'm a liar, Pisces. Alright, is this? I hadn't pulled any of these. I did not. I did not. Ah, letting go. There you go. Letting go. Allow the wisdom to remain, but the sting I shall never feel again. I love this. So why don't you guys, why don't you guys repeat that? Why don't you put that in the comment section? Write that down. Allow, I will allow the wisdom to remain, but the sting I shall never feel again. This is a mark of true wisdom. Pisces. This is the mark of when something comes at you, you grab it, and even if it's negative, you go, wait a minute, what is this? What is this? What do I do with this? And it lets in all the color of everything. Okay? It lets you see it for what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm, I love this one. I love this one. And this is why I'm going to leave you with this one. I will leave you with this one. And it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad redoing it, actually. I think, I think I'm think i kind of happy that I had to redo it because this, this felt really good. Okay. So, many of us have faced challenges within our lives. Again, it, it, the challenges. They're all talking about challenge, challenge, challenge. Lessons that we move through them change, creating ourselves anew with the wisdom of the experience. Many of us, the impact of a difficult and unfair experience is often so profound that it leaves a blueprint that is an energetic wound and scar that may not heal clean and well. It does. It goes right into your genetic DNA, it almost feels like, right down. Um, when we're ener energetically stuck at the level of negative experience, which is the seven of swords right here, okay, which is understandable. I love they put that, which is understandable. It sounds like me. It's understandable, okay. We often find it difficult to move into a new part of our life story, and we continue to draw echoes from the same experience to us. This is why letting go is essential for our health, well-being, and our soul's journey. The soul's journey cards are here. This is the magical spell cards, kind of funny. I, but of course, 
they do this over and over and over again. And by the way, if I didn't mention it, I did mention it in the first reading. Look at the adversity card. Look at the sword. Look at the sword in this pillar. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. In letting go, we integrate the wisdom, but let go of the trauma. We retain the lesson, but not the pain. So, it says, if this card chose you, which it did, it chose all of us, it's important for you to make the time to ask the universe for the very best of healings to you, okay? It's a way to reconnect with the present, let go of the past, and allow a new story to be written. You will be wise, but you will no longer be with the fresh hurt and the sharp pain that holding on can create. Bitterness will not be able to poison your days. Mm, lesson learned. Okay. So, let's see here. Let's see what else it says. Okay. It says... Mm, your work and magical effort shall be rewarded with freedom. Give this some time and the wheel shall turn. Your desire to heal is beautiful and will energetically fire this... Um, if you do a spell, if you say the words, okay? Innate power to bring you about positive change. So the full one, the full, the full uh, words of this, in case you guys. Shiran, wounded healer, come to me. Release this pain and set me free. Allow the wisdom to remain, but the sting I shall never feel again. By the power of three times three, as I do, will so mote it be. And that's a lot of a lot of spells are with that those last two lines. But you can just do the two the two front ones and just put that intention. The two first ones, I should say. Shiron, wounded healer, come to me. Release this pain and set me free. Allow the wisdom to remain, but the sting I shall never feel again. I love that. Um, it says to put. Uh, salt in a bath, draw a bath, maybe even with bay leaves. Um, yeah, I'm just going to tell you to take a nice long cleansing shower to let go. Letting go with water is good. Letting go with salt. Cleansing with salt is always good. It's some of the stuff that they um, teach you 101. And you can look that stuff up by yourself. So we're just going to stay with this right now. I love that. If you just want to say this one three times, four times... 20 times, as many times as it takes for you to feel it within you, I would say go for it, my beautiful Pisces. This has been your reading for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been the ground and the crown. I'm going to be back tomorrow with the before and after, hopefully not to record it three times. <laughs> and um, mwah, I send you love and light, and I hope your wisdom serves you well, and I hope your courage is strong. Take good care of yourselves. Bye for now.